We are here back with legendary legend shirt, Herman Moore, wide receiver. Man, here talk Detroit Lions. I love the shirt. First off, how you doing? And uh, who else got shirts like that? Well, you know what? Uh, I'm doing absolutely fantastic. Uh, right now, no one else but myself has this shirt until I release the Catchman collection. So get ready, get get ready for it. It's not just my stuff. It's just my take on Detroit sports. Uh, you know, I had to include our, our beloved Lions, but making sure that also I show um, appreciation and homage to to really all the, the sports fans because we are one. So it's a... Uh, it's coming, man. I'm looking forward to it. I'm super excited about it. I want to be able to share that new venture with a lot of our fans and a lot of our supporters. Yeah, it's a fire shirt, and I can't wait for it to, to be out because it'll be a fire sale. That was the first thing I seen. I'm like, ooh, look at that shirt. I'm going to have to get me one of those shirts. Legends, oh, yeah. baby. Uh, definitely, man. I, you know you're a legend in your own, so I, <laughs> I have to make sure I look you up. You're a real legend. I'm, I'm just one of those fake ones, one that of those pretends. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely how it is, for sure. Well, folks, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button while we talk here about our Detroit Lions. Let's get likes up to 100. We hit 6,000 subscribers. Huge milestone for the channel, so we appreciate it. Ben Johnson, great offensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions. We've seen the development of Jared Goff under Ben Johnson. Just absolutely phenomenal. Did a really good job. Pretty much top 10 in every single stat for the quarterback position this year. What do you think will happen with Jared Goff? Do you think his production will continue? What is your thoughts between Ben Johnson and Jared Goff? With Ben Johnson and Jared Goff, I think the OC and their quarterback and his, his quarterback, they have a great rapport. No mistake in that. You see the love, the camaraderie. You see the, the trust that has been developed between the two. As the, the play calling started to open up more, Jared Goff started to open up more. Yeah, there were some shaky times even when they started to expand that, but when they gave him the opportunity to, to take the helm a little bit more, to take shots a little bit more, to be a little bit more at liberty of where he goes with the football, which I think he always has had, but really without repercussion, uh, Jared Goff became a different player of, of confidence. Most importantly, uh, the quarterbacking position, and I think you're right on point with that, They that may be the position that's most affected. Player that a relationship with Jared Goff is really important. This last offseason, we signed DJ Chark to a one-year deal. See how he would perform. In the last six games with Chark, he's done a phenomenal job on the field. Him and Jared Goff's got a great rapport. If you are part of the Lions organization, from what you saw from a wide receiver standpoint, would you re-sign DJ Chark to come back this year to a longer deal to get back with Jared Goff and start the season sharp like it ended? Well, when you look at DJ Chark, you, you have to think of the long-term long repercussions and also uh, potential challenges you may have if you sign long-term contracts based on the dollar amount and what those guarantees may be and how that may hurt your cap because there are other players in skill positions that you're going to have to make decisions on. And that's before you even get to your offensive line that you want to try and keep together, which I don't know as well as these guys are playing, how you keep everyone together. You're going to have to have some players that you pay, but there are others that you're going to have to make some, some pretty significant decisions on. And that's just on one side of the football. Uh, I don't know if, you know, with DJ Chark, I think he has now placed himself in a position to where he's shown enough to where he could become a of interest for other teams, which gives him negotiating power. Uh, but at the same time, he knows that the Detroit Lions is now one of those Cinderella teams, one of those 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 sparkling teams, shiny new teams in the NFL. That is not as it necessarily mean if you go somewhere else, you're then even chase. You're probably chasing what people used to do in the past to the Lions, right? They're chasing dollars. And I don't see him necessarily chasing the dollars. I think he enjoys where he is. I think there is an appreciation that players have when teams give them opportunities like they've given him to kind of revive his career and and also to uh, be able to shine and show what his his, his uh, abilities are, given the fact that he was coming off of injuries. So this gives him the, the, the platform. And I think there's going to be a loyalty that has been developed between uh, Dan Campbell and his staff, uh, Antoine Randall L and his receiving unit 
and just the fact that I think there's a commitment that he has to his brothers uh, in the other in those in the receiving position, but also along the offense. So he, he's someone I think they should take a long, hard look at. I think if the price is right, you bring him back because he understands. But again, given what's happened with Ben Johnson, I think Ben Johnson plays a big part in terms of what he does, in terms of who they bring back. that That's that's some interesting dynamics, man, that are taking place here uh, with the Detroit Lions that's heading into this offseason. You talked about free agents, and maybe it's not all about the money. Just came out today, Herm. I don't know if you read it, but multiple players that are free agents, John Kaminsky, Isaiah Bugs, and others, went to Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell. They would come back on a cheaper deal. That's how much they want to play for this coaching staff and this organization. I don't think I've ever heard that, <laughs> at least from a Lions organization. This is Tom Brady, New England Patriots type of, of feel to it. What is your thoughts? As a player, you're all about the money. I mean, so am I. So is everybody. I think it says a lot because that means that player has to have a lot of trust. Let's let's step aside from the fact that he believes in his his, his the brotherhood. He believes in the players, the coaches, that's one end of it. But to think of the loyalty that a team will give you in the event your career doesn't go the way that they resign you for, will they have the same passion and loyalty for you given the fact that you took a pay cut or you came back for less money? It used to be take the money and run, take the money because the organizations and the players, you know, we're family until it's time to negotiate. So players are going to be reminded of that. I think the their agents are going to remind them of that. And there's enough history out here to say which organizations have been loyal uh, to their players and, and to the brand. And, and I think players will gravitate towards that. But I think right now that the, the synergy and the commitment back to Coach Campbell and his staff are so high, I think that is an asset that allows them to, to be at the negotiating table with strength as an organization because they can leverage the fact that the players don't want to go play for some other coach. They want to play for Dan Campbell. They want to play for what is probably one of the most exciting coaches to play for in the NFL and in coaching staffs that have gotten nothing but rave reviews. So I, I think right now, if the Lions want to keep this team together, I think coming in fair, coming in transparent and honest with what they're trying to build and then asking players to do their part by saying, hey, will you help us build this legacy by, by taking that pay cut or coming in at maybe a little bit less than what your market open market value will be, then that player now is making a, a personal commitment to do that. And it's not tied to any promises that the team perhaps uh, may have made or may make uh, that gets broken later because they can't keep that commitment because of the cap. One of the biggest questions that I've been asked this week, it's been requested, I'm seeing it a lot, so I want to give it to you to get your thoughts on this. The Lions hold the 18th pick in the draft. There is a running back in this year's draft called Bijan Robinson, the best running back in the draft, comparable to Saquon Barkley. Just an absolute stud. I get asked, would you be okay if the Detroit Lions drafted the running back at 18 instead of going defense and pair him up with Swift and Jamal Williams? Would that complete the offense like Jared Goff had when he was with the Rams and... Todd Gurley, would you do that? I don't think I'd put that much stock into the running game because right now it's not broken. Um, I think you're going to have to replace one of those running backs. And the one that I think right now, even though I love him as a player, uh, DeAndre Swift, I think he would be the one that they would probably look at first uh, if they were going to make any moves or, or not you know, have to, to make a decision if they decide to take that 18th pick and go to someone like Robinson. But right now, I don't see that as being a priority unless they make it a priority because they think that uh, there is some upside that's there. And then also there's some long term benefit to to parting ways uh, with a duo that has has really come well together. And then they also have backup players in the running back game that I think come in and do a, a very good job behind a very dependable offensive line. So th that's not a, a, a reach that they have to make right now. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful option for the Detroit Lions to be sitting in at 18th position and saying, listen, we can pretty much get whomever we want and we can get a player of impact based on where we see the best fit. We can go after best player. We can go after a targeted player that's available. We can do whatever we want. And technically it won't hurt our team. If anything, we just want to get the pick right. We want to just make sure we get a good player 
that adds to the chemistry of the players that we have. And I don't think they can mess that up at this point because this is a team, even if you didn't change much about it, um, I think you have to look at them very seriously in the NFC North uh, division and then also looking at them at the potential postseason play, even though we've seen what their release schedule looks like this year. It's going to be a, a tough battle, but I don't think it's impossible. Lastly, got two little questions here for you. The game last night, playoffs, the Dallas Cowboys kicker missed four extra points. I got to hear your thought on this one because I was watching the Manning cast and Manning was getting real upset about it, saying that we need to cut this guy. And number two, Tom Brady. Is it time for him to retire? It's time for Tom to do one of two things. I, I would like to see him do this. Uh, I don't I don't think I think he has the tools in Tampa. For some reason, if I had to pick an offense to say, I don't understand how you can have the receivers that they have, a quarterback that they have, a running back that they have, you got Leftwich, who I think does a great job of calling plays and a, and a comparable defense that they just don't score and they were that lackluster on offense. It's just it, it's mind blowing. Having said that, do I think if Tom Brady goes somewhere else, he's going to have greater success? I don't think so. I think he's still best. If he's going to come back, I think Tampa is the team to come back to. If he makes the jump and he goes to Vegas or he goes to uh, uh, one of those other teams, uh, I think it's going to be disastrous for him. I don't I don't think it'll work out the way in Cinderella form that he thinks. Uh, so if, if I'm him, I'm looking at either wrapping it up and calling it a day now, or I come back one more year, take one more run at it, uh, understanding that that's going to be my, my swan song and be done with it. But uh, and, and going back to the kicker, uh, you know, I, I felt bad. I was like, you know what, just go for two points, man. Just just do a Mike Tomlin. I, I, I remember when Pittsburgh, they, they just they, they were just going to just two points after two points. Dan Campbell, he was thinking that at some point, too, when they were having kicking woes. Um, I, I felt bad for the young man because you could just see him on the sideline and it was just it was painful. I felt like watching him, I felt like his soul was leaving his body. It looked very painful. He can feel everybody just staring at him. And it's like that old meme where Homer Simpson walks back into the hedges. I felt like that was going Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Where just kind of sticks back and goes back. Yeah. You know, I was going to ask you this. Like, here, I got a question now. Before we wrap, I, I do I have a question for you. So when you talk about the Manning cam and you're looking at, you know, kind of what he's doing there, I mean – I've seen mixed reviews on what fans think about that. And you got some that go, yeah, it's cool. And then you got others that are just really like, they don't like it at all. Um, I don't know. I mean, do you have a, a, a mix on that? Do you have a, a take on how do you feel about that? And well, I like I've Peyton, watched... by the way. I got to meet him a couple times. and and uh, Man, real, he's real got cool big guy. <laughs> <I think laughs> you it's... Know, his wife's the UVA. It's his wife, you know. UVA man, so I I had no no choice but to do that meta meta UVA game and share the suite with him and uh, cool That'd guy be cool. and plus Tom Moore he and I are very good friends and close with Tom Moore uh, so that's a good deal. He's got you know thinking with the Manning cast I've I've watched it twice and the only reason I watched it last night is because Dan Campbell was on there. One thing I thought it would bring more of is them dissecting plays. And they're not doing that. You know, you think with Peyton Manning and Eli Manning, they'd be like, okay, this is where this player is going to go. This is what succeeded. Didn't have a lot of that last night. I don't know if they generally do that more, but I think if they did that, I think the, the ratings for that would go up. But it is nice not to hear the normal Monday night cast. I'm not going to lie and just kind of people just chilling out. So not really for me. Unless they bring up and, and talk more about play on the field, I think that would be really cool. Right. No, I, I'm with you on that, man. I, uh, no, maybe we can get us a, a little fan cam or something going that uh, that allow us to be able to tap into the games like that. I think we bring a lot of energy, a lot of emotion. The Lions fans would, would be just tricked out by it. So. Oh, that'd be knows? ridiculous. Yeah, maybe the Lions would beat us to it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, we hit 6K. Why do you want people to subscribe and continue to grow? Tell them why they need to subscribe. Because when they do that, it allows us to bring some some nice comments. As we've talked about, we get in depth. We're not talking surface. We're bringing you from behind the scenes. Again, we're going to be bringing you exclusive content that you can get only at LNU. But also the swag that we got coming, man, the giveaways. I keep telling you guys about that. 
and we want to support your causes that's another thing that's going to be big on this so come on hit the like button hit the subscribe button because the thing is the more you do to that the bigger our community becomes and for those of you who are philanthropic you also will get the opportunity to reach out to a larger community that supports any and everything that we do and any and everything that is lions based so appreciate you and that's what it takes to make things you know you know things win so we want to be undefeated that's right undefeated just like hopefully in the next year's detroit lions well appreciate hanging out have a good one appreciate it perfect